Hey everybody, Mr. Johnston here. In this video lecture, we are going to talk about electron structure. So, uh, first thing I want to mention is uh, co kind of comparing and contrasting these two models of the atom, the Bohr model versus the Schrodinger model. Um, one thing to note is that the Bohr model, the electrons have distinct orbits, or uh, sometimes we think of those as energy levels that are outside the nucleus. The Schrodinger model is a bit different in that uh, it describes only volumes where there are a high probability that electrons can exist. The exact location of electrons cannot be known. Um, this is one of the tenets of the Schrodinger model. Um, one similarity between Bohr and Schrodinger is that electrons still have distinct energy levels. Um, so kind of comparing and contrasting those two things is an important place to start. Uh, we're going to be looking specifically at this Schrodinger model of the atom. I do want to talk a little bit more about these energy levels. So sometimes we also refer to these as shells. So again, thinking about those rings, those layers of electrons. Um, and energy levels are like shells that stack on top of each other. Perhaps you've seen like these uh, Russian nesting dolls or Ukrainian nesting dolls where there's one inside of the other. That's the way these layers of electrons go as well. Um, we do number each energy level, one, two, three, four. And the larger the number means it's the larger energy level, which literally means it's a greater distance from the nucleus. Um, each of the energy level is further divided into sublevels. So here we have energy level one, energy level two, three, four, and it continues on from there. And again, the higher the energy level, the greater the distance from the nucleus. So the first energy level is actually just one sublevel. Uh, and we actually label it with some letters. So we call that first energy level and the one sublevel, we call that an S layer. Uh, the second energy level is subdivided into two sublevels. And we label those with letters as well. The S is the lower kind of rung of the ladder, and the P is the next one up. And so we would refer to this as like, uh, if I'm looking at these, uh, I would call this the 2S sublevel, and I would call this the 2P sublevel. And so we can refer to both the energy level and the sublevel there. Um, the third energy level is subdivided into three sublevels, and we have an S, a P, and a D sublevel in that third energy level. Um, perhaps you see a pattern emerging here. The fourth energy level has four sublevels, and the, those four sublevels are the S, P, D, and now we have an F sublevel. So uh, notice also that there's some overlapping that occurs here. Um, the 4S sublevel is actually lower in energy compared to the 3D. So those energy levels actually start to overlap where one sublevel might be a lower energy than another sublevel of even a different energy level. So uh, that overlapping does become important as we're uh, learning about these electron structure. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is atomic orbitals. So uh, a couple of notes about atomic orbitals is that each sublevel contains some of these atomic orbitals. And really what an atomic orbital is, it's a region of space outside the nucleus that has a high probability of having electrons. Um, each atomic orbital can describe the location of at most two electrons. And each energy sublevel contains specific number and shapes of atomic orbitals. So we'll take a look at those right now. Um, 
an S sublevel, whether it's a 1S, a 2S, 3S, or 4S, always only contains one atomic orbital. Um, and we call that a S-shaped orbital. And that S-shaped orbital is actually just a spherical-shaped orbital. Um, and as we mentioned before, these energy levels, they kind of nest on top of each other. And so the only difference between like a 1s orbital and a 2s orbital is its size. Uh, 2s is larger and overlaps or is bigger than kind of contains the 1s. And then the 3s would be even bigger than that. The 4s would even be bigger than that. Um, we also have these p-shaped orbitals. So p orbitals are on p sublevels. So we have, you know, 2p, 3p, 4p sublevels and so on. Um, those p orbitals have kind of this distinct two-lobed shapes. Um, and I do want to point out that even though this is like two lobes, this all contains one orbital. So even though there's two lobes there, it's one atomic orbital. Um, and so there's an atomic orbital on this x-axis. There is a 2p orbital on this uh, z-axis, and there's a 2p orbital on the y-axis as well. And so um, what ends up happening is there's three distinct P orbitals, and they kind of um, share, or they, um, you know, they all are next to each other, and where the nucleus is would be right in the, the origin of that graph. And again, we see differences uh, in 2p compared to 3p is just the size. So 2p orbitals are a bit smaller than 3p orbitals, um, and 4p orbitals would be still larger than the other set. Uh, and then there are also these D-shaped orbitals. D-shaped orbitals kind of have these wacky shapes. There are five D-shaped orbitals. And so we see those D-shaped orbitals on D sublevels. Um, then we also have F-shaped orbitals. Now, F-shaped orbitals are only on the very large and complex atoms. We don't typically uh, see those very often in the elements that we kind of encounter on a regular basis. So we usually don't talk too much about those F-shaped orbitals. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that orbitals overlap. Um, and what that means is that the overall shape of an atom is generally spherical or circular. Um, a quick summary here, and I want you to jot this down in your notes as you've been writing down other things, is we can think about the number of electrons on each energy level by thinking about what sublevels are present. Um, and it is worth noting that the pattern here is we're like adding a type of sublevel up until the fourth energy level. Then there's only, after the fourth energy level, the same four sublevels present. And so um, we can think about how many electrons are at each energy level. So the first energy level, since there's just the single s orbital, we only see two electrons that can be held there. Um, remember that atomic orbitals hold um, two electrons each. There's one s orbital that holds two electrons, there are three p-shaped orbitals, so there we can have a total of six electrons, meaning on the second energy level there's room, a maximum space for eight. And we see that pattern continue uh, on the other energy sublevels. So that's all I have for atomic orbitals and electron structure so far. You're going to do a little exercise now with Adam Smith. And there will be a, another video explaining what you got to do there. So get these things down in your notes, and uh, we'll take a look at Adam Smith next.